Today, we, my husband and I, are gonna go over the coziest fall shows and movies that we have going on in the background or in the forefront during rotation all the way around. <laughs> scooby doo ba -da Circular, <laughs> this is so, in and out. This is so hard. All the time. <laughs> Remember the Kevin Hart? <laughs> so cringy. Today we are gonna talk about all things cozy, all things fall, a little bit of Halloween, but my husband and I are gonna go through 26 of our favorite movies and shows this time of year. I feel like some of these are more your favorites. Some of them are probably more my favorites. This isn't a list that you're gonna see every... <laughs> this might be a list that you never see. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I get through this? This isn't like a list that you always see. I feel like every time around this year, after August is over, I always look for fall movies and shows, like I'm gonna watch the new ones or something like that. I'm gonna find new ones, but I always gravitate towards the ones that we're gonna talk about. So let's just jump into it because there's 26 of them. We have the list right here and he's just gonna randomly pick one and then we're gonna talk about why we enjoy them. I just gotta jump right in though to what's actually the first one on the list here, which I had never seen before, before you. The Good Witch, this is a show. <laughs> Is this, is this a Hallmark show? This is a Hallmark show. Unfortunately, it's leaving Netflix at the end of September. I'm so sad about it because I love the show so much, The Good Witch. The Good Witch embodies everything that I feel like I am in <laughs> the most Hallmarky way. You know there's literally going to be a positive outcome at the end. Their problems really aren't problems. Yeah, what is The Good Witch about? The Good Witch is about a beautiful woman, Cassie, and her family that they own a, a bed and breakfast and they're witches. She's like a witch, but they never ever say it. And they never ever address the magic, but she knows things, certain things happen. And it's it's pretty cool because it's, it's so subtle and she's so kind and everything. And then there's lots of other stories around it, but it's basically this beautiful town, Middleton, and it's so cozy. You should check it out, The Good Witch. There's seven seasons. I'm so jealous if you've never seen it and you're gonna start watching it because I wish I could see it for the first time. I am going to jump here to a movie that I think is a new favorite for both of us. I don't know why, but who be Halloween. Talk about dumb movie, but <laughs> oh my gosh, gotta love Adam Sandler. I remember when we first saw this show. For you guys who don't know what the show is about, it's basically about how would you, how would you? I feel like I know the first fifteen minutes of that movie really well, and the rest. It's I, like one of those movies you put on in the background and like don't pay attention to. It's just the vibe that you're going for. I don't think I could really tell you, except for the very end. I couldn't tell you like most of the second half. We're obsessed with Adam Sandler. We love him so much. We love all of his movies. He could make the dumbest movie in the world. We will watch it a hundred times. So it doesn't matter how good or bad Hubie Halloween is. We're going to watch it. We're going to watch it a lot. Um, they need to make a second one. But the vibes of it is like, you like Salem, Massachusetts, that style, the coziness, the, the weather, the homes, stuff like that. Oh my gosh. They do it right in that movie when you're talking about setting a vibe for fall. Even the music, like the music sounds like from the 80s and 90s. It's just so good, it's so good. I think Adam Sandler movies though, it's just because it's like, here's a guy that's just making movies with his friends. Oh yeah, like, that is the, something that's so fun too is everybody in that movie are, they're people that we love, like Kevin James is in it. We love Kevin James. He always has the same cast, similar people in, in everything. We should go to the next movie then. Hotel Transylvania, mm -hmm. cause that's another one with Adam Sandler. He's got Kevin James and all his other guys in there too, uh, doing voiceovers cause it's a cartoon. We've got Selena Gomez playing the main character, um, Adam Sandler, the vampire's daughter. That movie is so cozy, Hotel Transylvania. There's two other ones. I really enjoy the second one too, but the first one I like playing over and over again cause it's very Halloween-y, all the different characters. There's a Halloween, party that's huge it's really cool and there's four of those right or i think there's four i've, I've only seen two 
there's a Hotel Transylvania vacation one. That Definitely is the, seen that. the third one. That one's that that one's okay. It's not bad. It's just whatever. It's it's one of those movies that you want to watch because you watch the other ones. Let's jump back to a show because you said Selena Gomez. Definitely a new favorite, but I think we've watched it every year for the last three years, and now watching it currently, only murders in the building. Yes. We started watching that when it came out in 2020, I think. And I can't believe there's four seasons now. Only Murders in the Building. It is currently going on. There's only two episodes out right now. There's It comes out every Tuesday or whatever on Hulu. And that show embodies so much coziness and fall. Definitely. What, what are your favorite things about only murders i think steve martin and martin short first off but also like just the supporting cast uh their dynamic with selena gomez is great how can you have a murder mystery that is kind of gruesome in some ways on different things but uh, that's kind of the the thing that i think is weird about some of these picks that we have there's kind of like some it's not really cozy stuff if you think about it they're kind of gruesome type things but the way that they present it, for sure, it's just like a murder mystery and the vibe of like the, the apartments that they have and um, just their chemistry, I think, the three of them, for sure. The aesthetic, the different generations, how there's like this gap of communication, but they make it work, and how they all come together with this this podcast that is something that they have, the, like this even communication playing ground on where they're like, okay, we can teach each other things and how to, to do this murder stuff but but it's it's so good and then as far as the gruesome stuff him and i we're we're both not really into the shock factor shock value of just like horror cutting heads off beating the crap out of people like that kind of stuff to me i feel like when all of a sudden there's like you can't even process it because it happens so fast and it's just like a gruesome murder or something like that Mm -hmm. in a movie it makes me feel like that's lazy writing. Like they had no other way to grab your attention and shock you, but to do the obvious. Yeah. I think for me, it's even if it's very fictionalized, but it feels too real and it takes me out of it being like fantasy, then if I feel gross with it, I just kind of, I'm kind of over it. But I think, I think both of our kind of position on it, I've certainly, I loved Game of Thrones and all that, but even parts of that show it was just too much. Mm-hmm. And especially, I think, after, you know, having a kid, like, your perspective changes, too. And so now I just want, like, good vibes in my life. Like <laughs> For sure. Uh, a year ago today, I was wearing this spooky sweatshirt, and I was 35 weeks pregnant. Our son's about to be one. And let me tell you, it changes what you want to watch. Maybe that's just for us, but I feel like it's because the days are so packed, so loaded, you're so exhausted. You just want to sit down and be fine yeah. and be cozy and just relax, not watch a whole bunch of murders or people getting whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's just, you just want to feel safe and cozy and just chill. Right. So that's where we're at with this kind of stuff. So we're setting that cozy vibe in the house and with the things that we watch. Right. I think you're going to be excited for what's to come. Uh, never saw this movie until you made me watch it. Practical Magic. Oh, yeah. That one's good. It was one of those ones that was in rotation a lot, but it was not because of the film itself, even though it's very cozy and fall folly. There's parts of it that really creep me out, <laughs> but it's the soundtrack. It's... It's a really good soundtrack. Oh my gosh, what is... Alan Silvestri. Oh, did. yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh, the soundtrack is incredible. So there is nothing better than having cozy vibes in the background and then a wonderful soundtrack to listen to in the other room or whatever. So that's what I love the most about Practical Magic. Whenever I think of it, I think of the music first, but then that beautiful house, that stunning house and the aesthetic and everything, oh my gosh... Did they build that house for that? They literally built the house for the set. People were obsessed with it, and then they tore it down. Bummer. But I don't know what they're... They're coming out with the second one. I don't know when that's coming. I think it just got announced like Mm. a month or two ago. So I don't think it's coming out this year. But next year, maybe. I think so. I think it's coming out. That'll be great. I wonder if they're going to have just as amazing music. Whenever I think of it, because I haven't seen that movie in a while, I think of the music. I listen to the music all the time still. It's beautiful. I think Alan Silvestri, more than anyone, I, I think unknown to me, because if I had to pick someone that really got me into music, 
like film music, Danny Elfman, mm-hmm. but Alan Silvestri, I think, impacted me before I knew it was him mm-hmm. because Back to the Future and then even more so Weird Pig, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Mm-hmm. He did the music to both of those. Wow. Um, and I, I love the soundtracks to those so much. And and it, it sounds like him. You, yeah. It's interesting how you can hear a composer's voice. For sure. Yeah. That movie... I watched it. I agree with you. The soundtrack is amazing. (laughs) The storyline with the sister creeps me out because I don't like anything coming back from the dead or haunting or anything. Oh, wait. (laughs) Spoiler. (laughs) Okay, anyway. There are parts of it that are very creepy to me. And then there are other parts that are beautiful. Sandra Bullock does a really good job. Nicole Kidman, stunning, beautiful. Okay, so we're going to do a movie and a show. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? Yeah. Another uh, heavy soundtrack hitter here for a movie. Danny Elfman. Beetlejuice. (laughs) Well, that's not Danny Elfman, but... That's the only only thing in that movie that isn't Danny Elfman, so... (laughs) Um, That's like the first song that comes to mind when I think of Beetlejuice. uh, Harry Belafonte. Um, Obviously, the movie. Amazing. But then, you know, 80s kid, 90s kid. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know if you watched it much, but the Beetlejuice TV show, cartoon. So I first started the holiday classics last year at around exactly this time. I was eight months pregnant and all I wanted was cozy clips of fall and Halloween and stuff like that. So I would cut a ton of different clips and just set set the mood, loved it. And all of you guys loved it too. That's how the holiday classics started. And I found the Beetlejuice cartoon by doing that. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize that there was a Beetlejuice cartoon. I absolutely watched it. I never watched it. I never watched it. There are a lot of clips that I that I have posted that I have not seen. But when I edited it into the, the video, I was like, this is so cool. I freaking love the animations, like style. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. It was mainly about the girl, or was it mainly about Beetlejuice? I think Lydia was in the show, but her and Beetlejuice were like friends, or they would like go and do stuff together. Yeah, it seemed like, because from the things that I saw, like the different little clips, it looked like they hated each other, but they loved each other at the same time. Like they were just like this. It was kid friendly. I mean, obviously Beetlejuice the movie. Yeah. Not as kid friendly. I mean, it is, but it isn't kind of thing, Mm -hmm. right? If I saw Beetlejuice as a kid, like a kid kid. What's a kid kid? I mean, especially me because I'm like sensitive with that kind of stuff. I would crap myself if I saw the shrinking head and like her big mouth opening really wide. Because I specifically, like that's all I remember from the very first time that I saw that movie, scared the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. Like that, so kid kid, I would say like 10. That came out in one like 88, 89, right in there, something like that. So I saw that when I was probably eight. Well, we're super, cool. super cool, super cool. That's crazy. Um, and another one of the like the, the soundtracks is really cool. And fun fact, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is coming out literally tonight. If you've been living under a rock. Yeah, if you've been living under a rock. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice comes out tonight. So that's pretty cool. You've got the Beetlejuice cartoon. You've got the Beetlejuice movie from 30 years ago. And then you've got the brand new one coming out tonight. And I'm excited for that one because it's Tim Burton still. Yep. And supposedly it's all about, it's like the grandma, the daughter, and then the granddaughter. The Dietz family. Yeah, so it's like generational. And as far as the um, stop motion, like, what is it? the Yeah, stop motion animation. Yeah, like the, the stop motion. Kind of yeah, claymation, stuff like that. It's all the same, supposedly. So I'm so happy about that because that would totally ruin the vibe of... The movie, I feel like. Yeah. If it wasn't the same as how they did it before, even though it would take so much longer. And Michael Keaton looks so good. For 72? I mean, I know he has all this makeup on and stuff, but at the same time, like, he just... That energy? He's such a good actor and really love most of everything he's been in. Have you ever seen Multiplicity? Mm -mm. That's a movie we're going to watch. Michael Keaton, he's so funny in it. Since Jenna Ortega is in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, we'll just slide right into the next one, which is Wednesday the show. That show is incredible. That's it. so creative, so fun, so like, how many times can I say so? 
Say it one more time. So amazing. It was great. The first season was so good. Like after I finished watching it, I was like, dang, that's not even something I could rewatch. Like I can't binge that yeah. because it was so good. Like it's just one of those things where you see it from the beginning to the end and you're like, this was great. It, it left enough after each episode of like leading you down a path, but not giving it away. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she was just great though. Like Jenna Ortega was amazing, but then also the her parents, what was her mom's name? It's Morticia, uh, Morticia but- I don't but, know, I can't Oh my gosh, that. she's like such a good actress. If you know anything about Wednesday, you know that she's so closed up and very monotone and just like dark. Well, she gets partnered up with this girl that is bright as sunshine, super colorful and everything. And the way that they have this relationship together because it's the majority of it is both of them kind of teaching each other along the series of how to be more like the other. Just not even like in each other's faces, it's just when you spend so much time with somebody, they rub off on you either in a good or bad way. But it's really cool because it sort of reminds me of The Magicians. That's another show, it's super cool. I liked the first, I don't even know how many seasons there are. I, I, I liked the first bit of it, but then the second bit kind of lost interest. Anyways, it's basically there's all these different types of people in this school that have different abilities. Like there's people that can telekinesis things. And I don't know if I said that right. There's were there's werewolves. There's other, there's sh like sharpshooters or whatever. There's lots of different types of people and stuff. So she's like in with this group that is insane. And it's basically like you're watching this girl try to fit in in school when she really isn't good at fitting in. She's kind of like a loner. So there's lots of real life things that you can pick from this fictional fantasy world. And there's this magical sense to it. There's this dark sense to it, but in a light way. And there's just a lot of creative, cool moments and honorable mentions of the past Adams Family stuff. I hope that the family is in season two more. Yeah. I just love when they mention stuff from previous movies or shows in it. Like they, they pay homage to the past in a way with certain things. You'll see what I'm saying if you watch the whole season. Moving on. Moving on. We're going to these two up together. We're going to pair these up together, yeah. But uh, obviously the original Adams Family television show. Um, Black and white. I, I don't know if I could actually tell you the plot to any episode. Well, they're all different, but it was the first of its kind back then until... Oh, the Munsters. Munsters. Those are two similar shows, but they've kind of had the same shelf life as far as being on air. But supposedly the Munsters had a higher rating. And the Munsters is like, um, there's the Frankenstein mm -hmm. and the other people. Frankenstein's Bride. And, yeah, like yeah, there's all the that. The So it's all like that style. And then the same with like, you've got the Adams Family, which is the same vibe. They're just more like a quirky family though. Yeah, they're not, yeah. they're not. Monsters. like. Yeah. So those two shows are so awesome to just have on the background. You see this pattern of us just putting shows on the background, especially now that we have a kid, we can't just sit down and watch a movie. But we've seen these things so many times that it's just like, it's just cozy. You wake up in the morning, make some coffee, open the windows to crisp air, put on a fall candle and put a cozy movie on and just listen to the soundtrack or see little snips of it or just hear their voices. It's just, it's so cozy. It is a vibe. We love that vibe throughout the fall. Ultimately, we may just be parrots and can't have silence. So we just have to have like little sounds yeah, going maybe on. Maybe we just background. need stimulation St way too much. Stimulus a little bit here and there. But it's also, I just, we don't do this until the fall. It's totally a thing. Yeah. Very true. The next one I just want to talk about, it's oh, just like it. another quick one, is Murder, She Wrote. Oh my God. This is an old show. I love it. It's this older woman who just, she's a writer and she solves murders. I don't know why there's so many murders in her life. Like every so episode, many. so many murders. She reminds me of our next door neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I just realized that. She totally reminds me of Patty. Oh my gosh. She's just a bad... Mm. She Punch is, it. she is. She's one cool lady. Yeah, she does it all. She, she's not afraid of anybody. She just stands up to her enemies. She's smart. She's so smart. She isn't afraid of anything. And she's so creative with her writing. She just doesn't take no for an answer. She solves all these murders. She's just cool. It's based in like the 
northeast as well. Not yeah, like I Massachusetts, think it's, but it's like Rhode Island or something. I think it's like New England. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's like so, it's those vibes. How many times am I going to say vibes? Vibes. It's a I lot of vibes. Know. I can remember watching Murder, She Wrote uh, with, I think, both of my grandmothers. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of a popular show. And so, you know, some of these picks may seem weird, but I think uh, it's a combination of the aesthetics of the show. It doesn't need to be about fall or about Halloween, but it's just like the setting it's, and yeah. the coziness behind it. And maybe even just like what it reminds you of. The nostalgia yeah, of it, for, for sure. sure. And just the way that it's shot, the graininess of it, it's really... It's really cozy. And then that just brings me to the next one okay. that you're gonna he's gonna talk more about because I don't uh -oh. we'll uh, see what you guys think about uh, this. Sorry about this pick. Twin Peaks. If you haven't seen uh, Twin Peaks, I don't know if you should. Um, <laughs> I guess it's a murder mystery, but it's it turns into this, you know, spiritual weird thing. I, I don't even know if I could actually get through all the seasons of it, but the first like season and a half the, the main kind of story arc. Uh, I think this is more Pacific Northwest kind mm -hmm. of area. But again, just the vibe of it. I just want to drink a cup of coffee and have a slice of pie and eat a donut and um, watch Agent Cooper solve crimes, you know? Agent what? Cooper. <laughs> that is the um, bad husband in Desperate Housewives, right? I mean, you would know. I believe he is in that show. Kyle MacLachlan. Yeah, him. Yeah. I don't really remember it. I remember watching the first season, I think, and I didn't mind it. It seems very soap opera-ish, but then it's the weird David Lynch stuff. Just It gets the only off the rails. The only repetitive thing that I see is just donuts and coffee at the police station. The, and, and the diner. And the diner, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's my cozy one. Like, that's not for me, but... Definitely not. It's something that you guys could be interested in, so we're going to put that in there. Let's do two more shows that are kind of heavy hitters for me. Uh, one more so than the other, X Files. You know, I've never if, gotten into X Files. If Agent Cooper was cool. Agent Mulder was super cool. Oh like, my god! <laughs> I don't have a good reason other than the vibe of the show. I know aliens and monsters of the week and all these kind of different things, um, but I think it's the the setting. They're in the forest a lot. There's leaves. It's wet. We'll leave it at that. If you like X Files, you like X Files. But how many X Files? Seasons are there? A lot. I don't even think I saw the final season because they brought it back. I, like, I think there was nine or ten seasons. I'm, I could be wrong. Was there like 25 episodes in each? There was a lot of episodes in each. So wow. a lot of... So if you're looking for a binge-worthy show and that's something that's interesting to you, there's a lot of seasons and episodes. Yeah. And I think part of the... Not that these storylines are remotely the same, but the vibe, the aesthetic mm -hmm. kind of leads why I would have this one. The, the first season, at least, of Stranger Things. Just yeah. that 80s vibe. Uh, it was, you know, a kind of outcast group of kids working yeah. together. Goonies, you know, that kind of thing. Oh my gosh, Goonies. See, we just, we didn't put that on the list. but We're going to mention that, though. But I think Goonies would be on the list for the same reason that the first season, at, li at least, of Stranger Things would be on the list. Because it's just like... That's one of the, even, you know, I could, I could leave all the monster stuff off. It's just them playing games and, you know, riding around on their bikes and stuff. Um, the Goonies, Stranger Things, those are two, they don't go hand in hand, mm -hmm. but Stranger Things more so the first season yeah. because they're kids, they're just doing their thing like what you're just talking about and they're just having a good time in the fall and it's just fall vibes. I'm actually not sure if that show was shot in the fall, but... It gives me those vibes. Does it come out in the fall? Or did they come out in the summer? I don't think it came out in the fall. I don't remember. Me neither. So we've been doing show heavy here. This had to be big for you. Hocus Pocus, the first one. Hocus I Pocus, know. I loved. I would watch all the time when I was younger. I loved it. I don't watch it as much now. It's more so background or just putting it on to set a vibe in the in the living room or wherever. Pocus Pocus 2 came out last year and it was okay. I think it's just one of those things where you watch a show when you're a kid and it seems a lot more magical and bigger in your eyes and the way you remember it and then you become an adult and it's different. And it's weird with Hocus Pocus 2 because I feel like that'll always be a classic. Seeing it next to Hocus Pocus 2, you just have to take it for what it is because it's not old. It's a brand new Hocus Pocus. 
and it just it looks more like seti. It looks like it's more like a play or like it looks more like a set, like it's too perfect. Mm -hmm. The second one. I think that's kind of the problem with a lot of like modern stuff though. It looks too perfect. Yeah, it looks too perfect, the second one. But it like I, I see what they're doing with it. They're obviously, I mean, this the second one came out 30 years later. So they're trying to get a whole new generation interested in this this story. So they changed it a bit and they're just going with the time, which I can appreciate. I think the things that I liked about Hocus Pocus 1 isn't necessarily, like if we're talking about vibes and coziness, isn't necessarily what I got from the second one. If any, I got, I got it from the second because- You love the first. I loved the first. Yeah. So that's how I feel about Hocus Pocus. And I love that all the main witches are all the same <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I think you have to leave that in in some, some way. I think I always confused Hocus Pocus with Halloween Town. Mm. We forgot Halloween Town. I mean, I never saw that either. So. Oh my gosh, I should have worn my Halloween Town sweatshirt. Halloween Town. I feel like since social media has become a thing, it is everywhere, so it's kind of overkill. Kind of like Hocus Pocus, but Halloween Town for sure, because there's a lot of people who use the audio of that. Like, uh, what is it? What is the audio? Oh, come on. I gotta find it, the audio. Anyways, the audio of that movie, there's, it just circulates all the time over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Kind of like Charlie Brown and the Great Pumpkin. You, I feel like you know exactly the audios that people use from that. And obviously the, the music and songs and stuff like that. But Halloween Town, totally meant for children. And I still very much so enjoy it. Halloween Town was good. Speaking of Charlie Brown and the Great Pumpkin, though, I think that's not on the list because that's like a television special. That's, yeah, that's a special. It's a little different. So these are movies and TV shows. Two things that are not as Halloween-y but give like fall vibes, one of which I think I know better than the other, and you know the other one better than the other, Okay. is uh, When Harry Met Sally and You've Got Mail. Yeah, I know You've Got Mail more so than When Harry Met the Sally. The superior When Harry Met Sally. Which, is that, are they like... <laughs> Sort of the same? No, I mean, it's they're both Meg Ryan. She's like the, you know, main character. Main character. Tom Hanks in the one. I, I like You've Got Mail, you know, but uh, Billy Crystal's When Harry Met Sally. It's pretty good. Well, when you've got, when you've got mail, you've got mail, it kind of starts off a little sketchy because there's some cheating involved. So I'm like, okay, what is this? But there are lots of cozy fall moments. And the fact that she owns a bookstore that was handed down from her family, and you see little scenes that are fall with pumpkins and all that stuff. I'm just like, bring it here. I think it's, they're, it, they're both New York too. Like yeah, kind of fall New York. For vibe. sure. It's a couple of those movies. It has nothing to do with fall. Has nothing to do with Halloween. But there are moments in it that show pumpkins and fall leaves and cozy days that are crispy. And they've got sweaters on and they're drinking coffee. And it's a whole thing. So I really enjoy You've Got Mail. When Harry Met Sally, mm -hmm. I, what is that about? That's about Billy Crystal takes, they like meet and they're, they both go to the same college or whatever. And I mm -hmm. think he's dating her friend or something. And he gives her a ride to New York. And then they kind of have banter, but don't really like each other. And the movie is basically them like bumping into each other developing friendships, all that kind of stuff, back and forth, though, how people kind of come into your life and leave your life and all that kind of stuff. But uh, they're both hilarious in it, and their chemistry was kind of undeniable in that movie. Mm. Along the lines, again, of, like, um, Only Murders in the Building. Oh, yeah, that, like, goes with it, sort yeah. of, um, the aesthetic. Knives Out. The first one, not the not Glass Onion, which was, like, a sequel or whatever. That was weird. Um, Knives Out, though... <laughs> just gave that kind of fall murder mystery vibe and the huge kind of oh my gosh. Victorian mansion. So cool. It was super cool. It, it's just another one of those things. And you guys got to know what we're talking about. You put a movie on and it puts you in the mood for fall. It's just, that's one of those. You see these people in their cozy sweaters in an old Victorian stunning home. It's just, I don't know. It's just fall vibes. It was like a modern version of... Uh, Oh, that should be on the list. Clue. Remember that movie? Clue. Yeah. 
doesn't I don't know if that we're trying to do 26 and now we're at 28 like, well, and I don't know if I get fall vibes from Clue because it's like a rainy night and stuff but I, that's kind of falling but Knives Out has more of like a fall aesthetic to it mm, I think for sure um, yeah good movie I don't think it's my favorite movie in the world but if it's on like it's cozy yeah 95% of these shows and movies that we're talking about we don't even pay attention to anymore because we've seen them so much um they're just on in the back. We got a few shows here, and I'm gonna go with one that um, I've never seen. So this is this is a maybe this is just a mention because it's on lists. The Gilmore Girls. Oh, <laughs> I literally put this on the list, Gilmore Girls, because everybody loves it. But I have not even really watched the show either. I think I get why people enjoy it so much. And oh my gosh, Kathy, um, one of our favorite actresses is in there. Hmm, Kathy Bates. No. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, I totally... One of our favorite actresses is in Gilmore Girls. Um, Mike Molly. Oh, Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy. A young Melissa McCarthy is in there. That's my favorite character. I've never seen this show, but she's my favorite character. I love her, and I think she was the cook or something. But I feel like as much as... The, the most I've seen Gilmore Girls is through so many clips online. And then a lot of their audio as well. And it's so weird to say that. Now. I know nothing of that show at all. I didn't know Melissa it's, McCarthy. It's was in like it. I think it's about a mom that it's a young mom who has a daughter. I, I have no idea where the dad is. I just know it's a mom and a daughter, and then the mom has like a bad relationship with her mom, and her parents are rich, but she's not. She works at like a hotel or something. Mm -hmm. I have no. I don't know. So do not come after me. But I'm put. I put this on a list because Gilmore Girls is a really good popular show still today for a lot of people and a lot of people find comfort in it. I didn't really gravitate to it, but that doesn't mean that you can't. So if you hear this and want to watch it, there's lots of seasons, I think, and lots of episodes. So it's binge worthy as well. So I wanted to mention that. We have one more movie on the list. Okay. And this is one that we can never remember the name of, but we like it every time we see it. Uh, is so, that is Marlon Wayans, right? Yeah. And The Curse of Bridge Hollow on Netflix. That's a new one. It's a new one. And it is really enjoyable. It's fun. It's totally like a family movie, super yeah. cozy. And it's about this dad who cannot stand Halloween. And him and his family move into this new town or whatever. And they go all out for Halloween. And the daughter really wants to decorate the house. And she finds this thing in the house that does something magical and it's that's that's all i'm going to go from there i don't want to spoil it but it's a newer movie and it's very cute fun and she it's was really cute she was uh one of the sisters in uh stranger things the main character there you go yeah the curse of bridge hollow can never remember the name of that ever never can never literally if i look it up on netflix I have to say Hubie Halloween, and then that one pops up beside <laughs> it. <laughs> like, I can never remember the name of it, but it's really, really it's cute. Really you should try it. And then, really, we got, I think, two left here, and they're both kind of old picks. They aren't really the same type of show, but we can just talk about them both. Bewitched, super Nick at Night kind of cute show. What's you know? the other one? Right above it. Oh, oh my gosh. These kind of go side by side a little bit a little as far bit. as, like, older shows. Yeah. Um, we like, we enjoy the older shows. They're, I love watching older shows. <laughs> so what, can, can you go in more depth there? Or? <laughs> That's all I got. I'm just kidding. Bewitched is, is that the one where she's? Yeah, she, she's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I totally. Miss Kravitz and. I was literally thinking Bewitched, the movie with Will Ferrell oh. for a second. So I was like Why trying to. Why did we to, put that on the list? I don't know. But. Literally bewitched. The show is so cozy. It's really, really cozy. I love magical things. So like the fact that she is a witch. Yeah, she's a witch. And she has to hide it. But her and her husband are really cute. And the fact that he tries to still, it's it's like the time of, you know, very traditional. Well, yeah. Okay. But traditional, you know. Wife stays at home. Role. Yeah. So the witch, she can't do any of her things that would make like. Everything a lot easier. Right. So that was really frustrating. There's stuff about older shows too. I love looking at it and going, Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that, there's a lot of that in Bewitched, but I like the magical parts of it too. The weird neighbor. The mother, yeah. The weird neighbor, the nosy neighbor. The mom. The mom is great. Yeah. Um, 
And then every episode is so different, and I like that a lot, too. Yeah, and speaking of every episode being different, but not the same same vibe, uh, The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone. So good, so good. We were on a roll with that. We were binging that for a while. There's so many episodes. Yeah, and it's just classic show and Everything so is weird. so different. Every episode takes you on a totally different experience. Like, it, there's no similarities really no they're com- they're one-off episodes each time it's really cool yeah. and um, completely black and white like that's a black and white show which i don't uh, know about you but i when i get into a show i don't even notice that yeah it's a vibe and i can't i i know his name but i can't the, the narrator who sets up each episode oh yeah um there was a ride at disneyland it's no longer there unfortunately the the tower of terror which is now the Guardians of the Galaxy drop thing. Oh, wow. Um, it used to be a, a um, Twilight Zone theme thing. Mm. Um, but super cool. And I don't know why I can't remember his name, but oh well. No, as soon as we as hit. Soon as, yeah, as soon as we stop. I know there's things that we've missed. I even had one in my head a moment ago that I can't remember now because we moved on. But We have three mentions, and I'm not even going to call them honorable. They're just random things that I'm going to mention, like I did Gilmore Girls. Cause... And these, like should be on the list in, in terms of the, the type of show that they are, but I don't think any of either of us like know them. Yeah. So the three that I'm gonna mention are just like what he said. They're the vibe that we're going for that you're here to go for as well. But Sabrina the Teenage Witch, it just doesn't stick for me and I wish it did because I like those kind of shows with magic and stuff. And witches. Yeah. And charmed there we go. There's another one. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I, I can't even talk about them because I don't really know that much about them. They really shouldn't be on the list then. But You would think they would be on the list, but they just kind of... If you go on Google and you type in best fall movies, best fall shows to binge or whatever, sure. you always see Charmed. You always see Sabrina. You always see um, Gilmore Girls for sure. The Practical Magic is on there, Hocus Pocus is on there, like all those types of things. But the majority of these are literally the ones that we find are comfy to us. And I'm sure there are ones we missed too. Yeah, but there, there's one that I can think of specifically. We should just round it up to 30. Well, I got but one then, so you go the, and I'll go. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Well, yeah, okay. We can just couple the first two together and call it a day. Like So Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and Harry a... Potter and... The Sorcerer's, the Sorcerer's Stone, Stone, Stone is the, first, the, one. the yeah. first one, yeah. So the first two, they're they're yeah, kids, innocent. they're more innocent, they're not into like all the drama and all that stuff. They're first exploring their magic and everything, and they're just so infatuated with it, and it's just so fun and cool to watch. The two Adams Family movies in the '90s were amazing. Like, oh my so gosh, fun. those man, we're all over the place right That's now. Okay. Oh my That's gosh. That's what this is about. So the two Adams Family ones, and then there's there's also an animated version of the Adams Family in oh tw- in 2019. I can't remember if I like that or not. I remember we watched a cartoon Adams Family that came out a few years ago, and it was okay. It was like fine, whatever. But the 90s movies with Raul Julia um, and Christopher Lloyd and other people, uh, Angelica Houston, super fun great. and so wacky. Yeah. All right. All right. So- <laughs> Anyway, there's 30 things that you can uh, go watch if you want to. 30 things. If if you made it this far. uh. So we thought we were going to give you 26 fall slash Halloween cozy movies and shows, but we gave you about 32. And and if you look at the notes here, the the first thing we have there is 13 cozy classics. (laughs) This is going to be so fun to edit because we were all over the place. You going to edit this or am I going to edit this? You're going to edit it. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. How do we end it? That was good. It's 115. That took an hour. Today, my husband and I are getting into the... <laughs> We're never going to get through this. She does this all the time. You would think that just because I'm here, it wouldn't make such a difference. But apparently it does. You didn't do this through the Simpsons video? No. <sighs> okay. Sweaty. Or it's probably the freaking Coke and coffee. Whoa! <laughs> go, 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 go. Oh. <laughs> it's supposed to be a cozy freaking. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. <laughs> I'm sweating. All right. Yeah. Are you already getting off? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna be. It's gonna be Shine City. <laughs> You're gonna think we're on an episode of Hot Ones. It's gonna be like. <laughs>
maybe coffee was a bad choice. Okay, here we go. Today is going to be a good day. <laughs> If this is how it's gonna be, I'm usually so fast. You want to do a podcast? (laughs) Okay, here we go. You want to do it live? We should start doing these live. (laughs) No, no. Please don't make me keep laughing. Okay, here we go. (laughs) Do I have any drips on me? Like I'm sweating. Shut up. Do I really? Can <laughs> <laughs> we turn that? We gotta wait for him to dry. Oh, we're gonna be here forever. 